Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the Flash 801 that aired Tuesday night. I'm recording this on Wednesday night. Um, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new. Also, if you haven't seen the episode, click on this video now. Go watch it and then come back and watch this video. Um, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching. Enjoy this video. So it opened up um, again as part one of five Arab Gang crossover. Um, it opened up saying that we're in 2031. This is where the Arab Gang crossover uh, takes place. Um, Despero appeared saying that he can stop Armageddon. Um, then in there, he, he's not really a bad guy. He, he he's like the hero of his own story in a right. Um, but he's trying to kill the Flash because Barry's supposedly destroying the whole world. An arm against caused by Barry. Um, then it goes to present time, 2021, Central City, where Bear and Kate are talking about Frost being happy and still uh, wanting to be with Showblane. Um, in case that she wants to get back out there like Frost has. Um, then Barry ran um, out to Keystone City, I think it was somewhere outside Keystone City or something, to stop two trains from colliding. It was a really amazing scene, and just, like, really made the premiere a hundred times better. Um, I said the first part wasn't good enough already, but this part was, hands down, the best running scene we've had in the show. Um, saying that he did on 12 seconds, got hundreds of people out of there, stayed that one, again, in all matter of 12 seconds. Um... He's, and then uh, Iris is interviewing Kramer for a news station, her podcast, um, called uh, Cisentopia. Um, Kramer's still got the CCPD. She's still in meta. She's going public with it, apparently. Um, Sue Dearborn bought the new building for um, Central City Citizen. Um, and Iris promoted Allegra at CC Citizen Media as well. Um, Barry said that Bart and Nora went back to 2049, but they dropped by here and there. Which, someone mentioned, I saw, um, some people reacting to the episode, and they were saying that, um, it doesn't entirely make sense to this timeline. Because, if in 2031, Barry destroys the world, right? Um, that's 2031. <laughs> that, that would make Bart and Nora, Bart wouldn't be born. Well, maybe it would be, I guess, but th that would kind of ruin everything in a way, because then there wouldn't be a world in 2049 where Nora and Bart are alive, because they'd be dead, because the world was destroyed. Even if Bart was born in 2030 or somewhere around there, he would still be dead, because the world would be dead. Barry would be killing his own kids. So I, that's something that that was kind of a loophole. I I don't know if they maybe intended on there. They didn't realize it. Maybe they'll touch on it later, but definitely some time travel crap going on that makes zero sense. Then again, nothing new for the show. <laughs> time travel's known to be screwed up on the show, so. <laughs> um, although it's only Barry who's doing it. Although I guess technically it is Barry's fault, if it is Barry. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Ray Palmer showed up at the loft, um, wanted to crash at Baron Iris's for the convention they're doing, um, which is where Despo first showed up. The Royal Flush Gang appeared, broke into Mercury Labs. Like the Mercury Labs gets broken into every season. This isn't anything new. <laughs> um, and they have new powers. Again, the whole theme of the season is leveling up. Um, Eric Wallace and Grant Gustin both said that this season's all about leveling up. Um, so obviously, you know, they're all leveling up. <laughs> um, Ray doesn't talk with the Legends very much, which I found very interesting that they put that in. Um, I, obviously, they just ended Ray's character on Legends. They... I don't think Brandon Ruth wanted to leave, but they end this character. Um, which is the entire reason why he left Legends, so that was something to put in there. Um, Nate and Ray meet up once a month. Again, something for Legends fans to tie into, you know, you're watching. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, Barry's working the Mercury Lab scene, and Central C was actually first attacked by the Royal Flush Gang. While he was in a coma. I don't remember if that was ever name dropped. Um, I do think they showed up once or twice. As a little cameo in the Flash. But um, they were in an er early Arrow season. Um, which is why Barry said they first attacked Central City. 
This wasn't the first time they ever showed up. The first time they showed up was, I think, in Star City in Arrow, like, season two or three. I'm pretty sure it was. So, yeah. Um, and then Kramer um, was explaining how her powers work. Barry's worried that she might find out that Barry's a Flash, because obviously, you know, his speed. Um, but she said it only works when she's stressed out or nervous or something. So, you know, they're trying to not make her go down that route. Um... Then we find out the world flush gun is behind the train attack um, at the beginning of the episode. And then they open up every cell door of Iron Heights. We saw Barry running in, putting all the criminals away. We didn't actually see him put the criminals away. But we saw him zooming all around, no pun intended, zooming around the entire um, jail. And then we find out that they still in that piece of tech. Um, Ray didn't want to start another tech company, which I found kind of interesting they were going down this route with him. Um, although I kind of respect why they did and why Ray doesn't want to. Um, he wants to stay away from the business and all that. Um, apparently Ray hasn't worn the M suit in a while, um, prior to the crossover. Um, and since he left Legends. Um, Iris talked to Allegra about who she is and not relying on being a meta, like leveling up in her powers. And she has to level up not only as a meta, but also as a person. Because she is that. She's both a person, human being, and a meta. And they're different, obviously. So, she was kind of talking like her about that. Um, Chester, this is an interesting scene in the episode. After Chester and Ray had like a little argument or whatever. Chester was disappointed in Ray. Or, was, you know, whatever. That whole thing. Um, Chester brought up how he is basically dead to Ray. And Cecile had like a reaction to her. I, I think the best common sense we can answer, or the best common solution we can go to that, is something related to Joe, but that would mean Joe's dead. I, that, that was something that didn't get me right, because as far as I can remember Cecile, she never lost anyone. I mean, unless it was Joe and Cecile's daughter that maybe they just killed off, which why would you kill off a kid, you know what I mean? Why extend the season four... Storyline still being pregnant and having powers based off her pregnancy, you know, just all for that kid to be killed off. It was either the kid or one of her kids, or because I think she had another kid. That it was Joe, and Joe was in the intro card. I actually rewatch it to see, so he's still like in the season. So I don't think they killed off Joe. Maybe I, everyone's thinking Joe's dead. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me what's going on there. Maybe we'll find out next week, but we definitely need to find something out because that made zero sense to me once I was just your reaction. Um, that was one of the low points of the episode. And I'm like, you need to add something there. You can just have to still do that reaction and not like explain it at all. I think everyone's expecting something wrong with Joe. Maybe he's presumed dead, but we all know he's not. I mean, come on, he's in the season. He's supposed to be. He's a serious regular. Um, then it goes to Flash fighting the Royal Flash, Flash gang um, in Flash time on his own, which is what he's been wanting for the past eight years. This is, best, this is the best episode for Barry using his speed in general. Um, let's be real. Um, Barry can then get super speed again. They got rid of that in eight, or 702. They brought that back, which is good. That's not overpowered, but Barry still can do it and still have his emotions, which is problem in 702. Um, which is why he got rid of it. So it's good that they put that back. I think that's good to have. Um, Barry tells Ray to invent what he wants, not what he has, because that's who he is. He's the person who invents. He doesn't even know he's want to get back in the business. It's still good to see Ray doing all this stuff. I also ended up interviewing Ray. Despero showed up at the convention, I think, towards the end of that interview. Um, and Despero has, like, the ability to talk through people's minds, kind of like how we saw in the Supergirl finale, um, with Brainy transmitting Supergirl's message into people's brains so they could hear her. Um, hear her. That's kind of what Despero was doing, except he didn't have a device, it was his power. He can mind read or mind talk people, well, however you want to pronounce it. Um, Despero was talking to Barry and he said that he came to our time to meet him and kill him to obviously stop Armageddon um, and Despero turned into his alien form 
And the CGI on this looked amazing as hell. <laughs> I, I saw a lot of people hating on it. It, it. There were a lot of people excited about it. There were a lot of people were some people were hating on it. Because this guy hate the show in general. I mean, let's be real, a lot of them do. While they still watch, you ask them. But this CGI looked like level of King Shark and Grog combined the one. It was 100% the best CGI we've ever had on the show. Again, next to Grog and King Shark. It just, even in the daylight, it looked good. And that's really saying something. Like, some of the CGI on the show, when it's in the daylight, it doesn't look that good. King Shark, Grog, they both look great in the daylight and, obviously, at night. Where it kind of hides, like, they don't have to put that much effort in CGI at night, which is why they do some of the scenes. If you notice with King Shark or Grodd at night, it's because of the CGI, they didn't put that much effort into it. Well, not really effort, but they didn't have to put much effort into it. Um, but having Despero in the daylight with the full-on CGI, it looks absolutely amazing. I love it. <laughs> um, and then Despero ended up punching Barry through, like... 50 feet, and he landed outside the building, um, and he, apparently he can fly or jump really high, whatever, you, aliens, <laughs> he's an alien, um, who the hell knows what powers he has, really, all of them, I guess, um, Ray showed up in the item suit, um, and Barry and Ray fire at Despero, and I thought he teleported first, but, because I didn't really hear Iris or Chester, um, when I was watching the episode, but he did, he was playing mind control pranks on Barry and Ray, um, which is what that scene was, um, and then he threw a car at Barry and Ray, and they actually, sh Ray shrunk Barry, and they flew through the car, an amazing scene, again, in this episode, it's like the fifth amazing scene in this show, or this episode, I mean, um, and then Barry referenced how Dick feels when he runs him somewhere, so that was a good, funny line to put in. Um, Barry ended up making a speed mirage, fought Despero, and Despero found out which one was the real Barry by, again, mind reading him, and threw Barry against a car, showed him his future, and we saw for the first time Barry destroying the world, or at least what looked like Barry. <laughs> um, I think it's fair to say that that wasn't Barry. I don't see him. Straight up just destroying the world, let alone killing Iris and at that point in time. Should be at Nora West Allen, who's been born, I think, for a couple years at that point. And then Bart, who I would assume must have just been born. I don't see that being Barry. I, I see that either A, being Thawne, or maybe it's Barry, but he's being mind-controlled. I don't know. I, I think the best possible bet we have is it being Thawne. Um, taking everything that Barry has in the future, trying to make him go faster. She so takes over Barry in the future and gets his speed up and all that. I'm assuming that's what that is. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm going to be talking about another video that will be up on Friday. Um, Ray doesn't know what the tech Despero had. Pike is his future tech and also alien tech combined the one, which is, you know, basically impossible to figure out in our time. Um... Mainly because we also haven't been able to figure out alien tech for a while. Um, until Supergirl came in. But, even now, we still have some tech we don't entirely know. But, <laughs> future alien tech doesn't really work. <laughs> like, we can't figure it out that well. Because, um, why would you? Um, Katie said she's going to contact Alex. Now, we know she's going to be in this crossover. I think it's part three she'll be in, I'm pretty sure. Um, Ray left and offered to help Team Flash if Death Ball shows up again. He won't. I don't think he'll be showing up again. I don't remember entirely. Um, Despo reappeared, re reappeared, <laughs> reappeared, and Barry was talking to him, trying to talk him down, make Despo realize that Barry's not a bad person. That in fact he's a good person, and he does good, and he would never destroy the world. Um, it was a good scene. Um, apparently Barry takes lives and hides in the future. That's what Despero was saying. And it seems like this wasn't just a one-time thing. It seems like this was like, um, it went on for a long time. When he said Barry's taking lies, future him is taking lies and hiding. You don't say that when he's just doing it for one day. This has been going on for weeks, probably, in the future. So, again, I, I have to believe that e either this is Barry... 
and he's just gone full blown evil for whatever reason. Maybe losing Iris at some point. I don't know. And became Savitar, maybe, in the future, and it changed. Or, I mean, maybe it's Thawn, and like I said earlier, he's just been doing this for weeks. He took over Barry, and he's using his speed to destroy the world, destroy our Barry, too. Because he, he, maybe he planned that. I don't know. I And a little bit thinking over the top, I think it's kind of random that Despo decided to come back to now. The 2021, 10 years before, and not like a year before. You know what I mean? Like, maybe it's been going on for years, but you decide to come back to now because they didn't entirely know, like, if those years are compromised. Maybe the last time Barry's The Flash is in 2021, and during this crossover, during this crisis, Barry becomes evil and he's that evil for 10 years. Maybe that's the plot. I, I don't know. Th that's my best assumption. I don't see Despero just coming back 10 years before. 10 years. I don't see that. Why? Why, <laughs> why 10 years? Why not like 2 years before? You know what I mean? There's a big gap here that they need to fill up. And I think they're really going to do that in the next 4 parts. If not, probably next week, honestly. Um... And then Despero said he has seven and a half days to convince Despero he's not evil. Basically, by doing good, if he doesn't even want thing evil, Despero will be convinced and that thing will home. go to hell. <laughs> so, yeah, overall, it was a 10 out of 10 episode. 100% lives up to the hype. Um, I mean, it was just an amazing episode. Best for me, we've had the show, in my opinion. Season 2, 3 were good. 4, 5, 6, 7, they were all great. But season 8, I mean, we've got everything we've wanted in this show for the past 8 years. Which was Barry doing stuff on his own. Barry using his full speed to stop villains. He did that with the Royal Flush Gang. He used his full speed with the trains. He, you know, he's quote unquote leveled up. I mean, he, he's doing all these things that really should have been done years ago. <laughs> But the writers kept writing it down as he's slower than he actually is. So now they're keeping him this. And I'm very proud of Eric Wallace. <laughs> um, which is really something I don't think anyone was expecting to say. But Eric Wallace knows what he's doing. I think this is the season where we actually see Eric Wallace knowing the Flash. Understanding the Flash. Actually making the show what we've been wanting it to be for the past eight years which, like I said, Barry using his full speed, using his full ability, his full powers, and doing it on his own and not having Iris in his ear 24-7 telling him what to do, or Cisco or Caitlin or Chester or whatever, telling him what to do. This is comics flash that we're seeing in this episode, and I mean, it better say throughout the rest of the season, otherwise it's going to drop, but I think this season's going to be top of the line of what the show's had over the past eight years. And as I kept saying, if you haven't seen The Flash the past couple years, this is a time where you come back and you enjoy The Flash for what it was before Season 4. If you quit watching then, this is where you come back and enjoy The Flash. I truly do believe that even more now after watching 801. 802 seems 100 times better already from what we've already seen. So it's going to be very interesting to see what comes to this crossover. Um, again, five parts around part one, part two is next week, and then we have three more weeks, and then we're done with the Flash for three months. Um, and it comes back on a new night. I've already done a full video over that, go check that one out in the description down below. Um, and, uh, yeah, I have another video coming out Thursday, I don't know when, some point Thursday. Um, and a video coming out Friday as well, all Flash videos, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed those videos as well. Go watch shows if you're watching this like a 24 hours after something should be up so I'll go watch that video and uh yeah thanks for watching have a good day have a good night stay safe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys